All right, here to talk about um, police reform and, of course, racial equity in the city of Farmington Hills is the Reverend Dr. Patricia Coleman Barnes. Uh, she is a senior pastor of the, at the First African Methodist Episcopal Church, alongside, of course, Daniel Ware, who is the president of the Community Equity Organization. Both of them teamed up uh, for the recently fourth annual John H. Barnes Conference on Community Policing. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And I want to begin by saying, um, Congratulations and happy birthday. Thank for, you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say how old you yeah, are, Reverend. 75. 75 years and looking, yeah. looking younger with 75. Thank you. And happy Thanksgiving to you all as well. Yes. Thank you. I want to begin with um, the question of police reform equity in the city of Farmington Hills. Um, you both have taken on this gigantic task of, of trying to perhaps, you know, in the words of Martin Luther King, bend the moral arc of the universe. Yes towards justice in the city of Farmington Hills. On the hills of the recent forum, which I moderated, I, I, wanna, I want you to talk about it, Reverend, in terms of where, you, where Farmington Hills goes from here. Uh, because there were some council members uh, uh, you know, who came out to the forum. Uh, the police chief was there. Uh, the police chief of Farmington was there. So you had two police chiefs there. You had council members there. Where do we go from here for first, Farmington? First, we want to thank you for doing a superb job of moderating, we greatly appreciate it. Um, where do we go from here? I think people don't understand the concept of time, that it takes time yeah. to move forward. And we're now at a point in history where we can go beyond eight mile roads. <laughs> See, folk com got confused what Coleman was saying. We could not go beyond eight mile road unless we were maids or janitors or chauffeurs or working uh, at after sundown, you needed to be back on the other side. So in Farmington Hills, if you think about it, redlining, deeds that said you couldn't sell to certain people. So we are now at the point where we're 20% of the population. We are now on the other side, north of Eight Mile Road, and we want to make the city a place where we feel comfortable, we feel uh, welcomed, yeah. And we also can benefit from the genius of people like, um, I almost called it Dr. Ware. <laughs> you know, but look, we have a lot to offer. Yeah. And so the city can grow and be what it needs to be. So the next steps are uh, how do we embrace the unique cultures and values and traditions of the people that now make up Farmington Hills? Yeah. You know, uh, Danielle, um we, leading up to that forum as well, we, we, we kept on emphasizing the, the, the demographic, the population numbers for black people. And, and I think sometimes it's not heralded as much mm -hmm. as it should be, uh, but 20% mm -hmm. uh, is significant. It's not 5%. It's significant enough to even alter an election. Absolutely. It absolutely is. And so um, when when the population grows in that way and changes in that way, right. you have to look at yourself as a, com uh, as a community and say, how are the people being included? Yes. Are they just on the peripheral, on the fringes? We'll take their money and their taxes. Uh -huh. We will have their children in the school so we get that federal money coming down for, for their head count. But other than that, we won't see them as human. We won't engage with them to make sure they're included in the community. Or do we alter our way of doing things mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone is seen in the community, their culture, their, um, their respective beliefs, mm -hmm. and make sure they're respected and protected mm -hmm. as, as each and every one mm -hmm. is in the community? You know, th there's a school of thought, uh, Reverend uh, Barnes, that tends to think that when we talk about police reform, when we're saying, you know, mm -hmm. treat black people right, they tend to think that we are overreacting. It's a question of just obey the law. Can you just uh, respond to that? Well, do we do a history lesson? Do we do Emmett Till? Was Emmett Till overreacting or his family to protect him? Where can we go? So the sense is, for some reason, because race, if you know very well, is not a scientific concept. Mm -hmm. It is not biological. Mm -hmm. It is not genetic. So yeah. what is it? Yeah. So what is it in my behavior or in the way I carry myself? An artificial oh, oh. construct. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. That uh, somehow you look at me and I'm a threat and I'm dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm not overreacting. 
I'm dealing with the reality that I experienced for 75 years. Mm -hmm. I, you know, of course, I didn't remember when I was one. Right, right. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a history. And so, no, we're not overreacting. We are hypersensitive. That is, we see things coming our way that are dangerous to us and to our families and to our children. It was the way I was raised. My mother was a very mild-mannered woman, mm -hmm. understood when her children were under threat and therefore would call us in. Uh, and so we have a long history and experience of being targeted, of microaggressed, of being called out in ways that are, again, harmful and traumatic to us. So um, what are people saying when they say that we overreact? They're saying that we get everything that we deserve, and yeah. therein is a, a big problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and Danielle, and, and you know, th that overreaction to, to Reverend's point in terms of just decimating that, that, that kind of a nonsensical view, but it's out there. They say, you know, just, you know, in fact, I remember uh, when I write columns in, in the Detroit News, I see some of the comments, Bankola, just tell your people to just, you know, mm -hmm. you know, behave when they get pulled over by the police. Uh, it, it's, it's so ridiculous because they're not in that position, right? Uh, you know, you, yeah. when you speak from a privileged point of view, you don't know what it means to be to be wearing an underprivileged uh, space, to be in an underprivileged space. That's so true. Um, I I was doing a talk about a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. at a church, um, and one of the things I pointed out to one to to the group there is, you as a white man, for example, not you, mm -hmm. but in right. the audience, when you are pulled over, you would be offended if someone asked you where are you going. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? That's right. Why, why are you, or, or whose car is this, and why do you have it? Um, you wouldn't feel like those are appropriate questions for, for police to be asking you, mm -hmm. and therefore you wouldn't answer. But mm -hmm. you're given that grace to speak back to them and ask them questions. Like, why are you asking me that question? You don't have the right to know. Mm -hmm. You can spout the law to them and it not... Turn, turn around and be you get out the car and get arrested mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. spouting the actual law that is supposed to be governing your body as well. Mm -hmm. um, so people seem to not understand that this is what we experience. And all we're simply saying is this is wrong. And when you are doing this, we expect it to change. And we're going to fight to have that change. You know, um, thank you, Danielle. Uh, so after November the 12th, right. I was, after the conference, after the, conference the John H. Burns conference, mm -hmm. I debriefed with my son, who's mm -hmm. 42, mm -hmm. raised by John Burns and mm -hmm. Pat Coleman Burns. And he said, and it's something that John also experienced, we are a transformational culture and people. And so our men show up very differently than the traditional model, we hope, of manhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my son said, as he carries and takes care of his children, mm -hmm. as he shares equally responsibilities mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. he said, nope. He said, Mom, people see me as a black male carrying my one-year-old, won't even open the door for me. No one pulls me, sees me on the side of the road and asks, what help do you need? Mm -hmm. And so there's a sense of demonizing or mm -hmm. marginalizing black men as, mm -hmm. as somehow the problem is, as opposed to saying, uh, and this is police, mm -hmm. who, how can I help this person? Perhaps mm -hmm. you need assistance, which is what police should be doing. Mm -hmm. I should be able to call you mm -hmm. if I'm in need. I right. should be able to call you if right. someone is breaking into my home right. or looks suspicious as opposed right. to me being the one arrested. Right. Why am I being the one arrested? Yeah. So I do think that the culture that we represent, because we do have a way of talking and yep. walking, yeah. is progressive. And it is that arc that's moving forward. Yeah. And we're challenging people. Perhaps right. you ought to learn from us. You appropriate our culture. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Meant in so many ways. In so many, so many ways. But looking at the city of Farmington Hills now, where it is, you know, I, I take it that the, the two ch police chiefs who were there, who stayed throughout the forum uh, that, um, that you all hosted, I take it that they walked away with some uh, lessons learned at some point because of just the, 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 the forum was tense, uh, the conversation was real, it was raw, I mean, it was not sugarcoating, it was just, you know, this is the state of affairs, 
in terms of you know w you know what black people are dealing with in the city of Farmington mm -hmm. Hills and and across Michigan. We would like to believe that they uh, walked away with something. Right. Um, uh, that they they listened. They didn't right. just hear. That they listened. Um, we have follow-up steps to meet with them and have that dialogue to break down what did you learn? Not, not just what did you, you hear, but what did you learn when the people spoke? And out of that, what nuggets do you believe are applicable to our community? Um, and then let's have that conversation in a collaborative manner so that we then begin to bring about the change that we seek. You know, it was unique, uh, Reverend Burns. I, I was happy that the need of the chiefs were on the panel because I think too many times we go to forums and we hear what officials, they make their declarations, how they want things to be and, you know, uh, what guidelines and rules to follow and, and, and so forth. And this is the food we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. whether, whether it's your taste or not your taste, we don't care. But I think for once we saw a forum where the chiefs of police sat in the audience and were listening to a panel of individuals who have been in this space talking about police reform, constitutional police in the way I like to call it. This is, a, and we really didn't want to create a platform for them at all, but it, yeah. it went a little differently. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why is that we wanted them to sit there and listen. That's what our, our proposal says. Listen to the stories and the histories of people who experience um, law enforcement in a very unique and different way. Right. And so what I also think when we focus on the community and equipping them to understand both the civics, the laws, the policies, and the procedures, they're better able to handle it. Yeah. For example, the police chief and the uh, director of uh, public safety in Farmington and Farmington Hills, uh, they are appointed by the mayors. So and run, the cities are run by city managers. So it's not enough for us just to speak to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. they ha we have to figure out how and help the community understand mm -hmm. to hold accountable the, the city government, the municipal government. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you this question as we begin to round up. I'm getting the signal here, but I, in, I remember in 2020, I, I was at Michigan State University giving the keynote lecture for the 20th uh, annual Slavery to Freedom uh, lecture series. And my, my subject was on black lamentations uh, and the redemptive need for healing in American democracy. And when we look at the city of Farmington Hills and what you're doing, you're responding to the call of black lamentation, yes. the cries of black people. For those who are waiting to say, well, Reverend Burns, we see what you're doing. Danielle, we see what you've done now. Uh, what should we do now? Uh, you have this forum. Uh, council members were in attendance. What should we do now? What would you say? The first thing I would say yeah. is we need to reach them 20%. I was on my way over here, I was thinking, now we need to move and create a space where more and more right. of those who are targeted yeah. understand we have a forum right. and so that they trust more of what we're doing. Right, we right. need to expand that as well as hold accountable the municipalities that we live in. Yeah, mm -hmm. Danielle? Um, Absolutely. We need to hold the forums. Um, we need to get the, the, not just the police to understand, but as Dr. Coleman Burns said, in our towns, they're appointed. And so we need our government to come in and understand this is what we're expecting as community to um, have our police officers do and join us in that conversation mm -hmm. to create that, that lived experience that's equitable to everyone. I mean, the fact that they're appointed, it's, there, there's, there's an easy, it's an also an easy way to hold them accountable anyway because you have to talk to who appointed them. Absolutely. And if they're being held accountable for doing what they've been doing, then we need to change either who is making that appointment or who is holding forth that agenda right. and change that agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've seen uh, mm -hmm. and worked with the law enforcement, right. they speak a language of understanding and wanting right. Right. to change. Right. But sometimes the powers that be over them that hold right. their paycheck right. 
Yeah. We just give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Well, we'll keep watching and following the good work that both of you are doing. The Reverend Dr. Patricia Coleman Barnes is a senior pastor at the First African Methodist Episcopal Church of Farmington Hills. And Daniel Ware is the president of the Community Equity Organization. Of course, uh, they're raising Cain and raising hell <laughs> in the city of Farmington Hill. I call it Black Farmington, y'all. Black <laughs> Farmington Hills. We'll be right back with more on Sunday Nation. I'm Ben Thompson. Stay with us. <laughs>